All right, everybody. So I'll go first. My name is Valerie Zenzi, and I teach uh, pre-engineering at a local high school in Worcester, uh, Worcester County. So I'm on the eastern shore of Maryland by Ocean City. Uh, and um, I teach high school to so 9 through 12 pre-engineering, and I deal with uh, big people. And my two kids, um, Emma and Lucas, they're five and seven. They're at the elementary school. And I went there for a couple um, events last year and saw little girls. And I was like, you know what? It could be a good idea to start a drone club there. So I floated the idea by um, our um, CT coordinator in our county. And she's like, you know what? Let's try it. So she found a grant. We found the money. And I knew very little about drones at that time. I mean, literally, like I knew that they were there and I maybe flown one a little bit and that was it. So I knew nothing last year. And we started a drone club uh, last year. 36 uh, girls went through the club. So it was just me and three sessions of after school activity. And um, this is my second year. And in the summer, I had time to do PD to develop sub lessons. So that's about me. Uh, well, this is my uh, overview. Um, we will just talk about funding. I'll talk about the drones I have and I have had. I'll describe the software activities I'm doing and we'll take the questions. I am not, I'm not the lengthy talker. So um, I apologize if I go too fast, if you please stop me and ask questions. Um, so those were my girls last year, um, some of them. Uh, like I already mentioned, I ran three eight week, eight or nine week sessions at the Shaol Elementary. That was just me last year. I had 36 girls. And um and uh, we did it in cafeteria because of the COVID restric restrictions last year, but we have it, we have it in gym. The drones are used for the inside only because the slightest gust of wind takes, takes it places. So I would suggest doing the program inside. Uh, at the end of the year, I did the drone Olympics and uh, we asked the log my pack members, we asked them to provide us with a hanger. So it was an old um, airport hangar and we brought the girls in they competed in eight events that i made up and we our laser shop made the medals and we had some gift size a scavenger hunted from all the different schools and uh, we had a blast it was just me last year but uh, this year the drone uh, um after school program moved out to actually buckingham elementary they are running it also now, Berlin Intermediate School, they're also running it, and it's also in the Southern County, too. So I think about six schools are running this program now, and so our Drone Olympics uh, at the end of this year will be much bigger, but I'll have help to set it up. So uh, this was the shots from uh, last year Olympics. If you look at picture one at the top, you'll see that the girls are trying, there's the Lego sitting on top of the drone, and they had to fly from different day stations. That was a cargo delivery. The picture too shows you the little golf course, which um, the girls, like if you can see it, I have like a little, uh, like a soft material attached to it and it kind of pushes the ball off the pole. So that was their task to push all the balls off the poles. And then the other one I made up out of PVC pipes and pool noodles, obviously. And there was a landing pads. They had to land at different paces and the landing pads had also pictures of riddles. They had to take a picture and then solve a riddle after it too. Um, I purchased some of the equipment also the, for the wind robotics. Um, they have a lot of uh, equipment there. But if you don't have money for it, gym equipment works as fine. Cones, you know, the pool noodles, PVC pipes, is it like just go to the garages and you'll find some materials to make the fun equipment with. So the drones I used are the little teledrones, these guys right here. They're little dinky drones. They have a battery that comes with them. They take about 10 minutes of flight, probably. And um, the bad thing about them is it takes about hours to recharge. So if you do buy the drones, I would suggest buying extra set of batteries and extra charger to go with it. So there are extra batteries are charging as you fly. Um, I don't know what kind of drones you guys got for, or like Scott got for you, but for the wind robotics I had last year, they came disassembled. So I had to assemble them. Um, it's a bad thing, but it's also a good thing too, because my third grade girls, they assembled the drones together themselves. So we had like two hours probably, like was two after school sessions hour each. 
I had I played the directions on the board and I had 12 girls assembling drones and they did great. So if you are worried about assembling them or, or want to try to do it yourself, don't. Just have the girls do it because they will have fun with that. You will have occasional like bad placed motor and you have to like fix it, but it's okay. They had fun with that. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Um, about the Tello. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're exchanging batteries, do you then have to reconnect it? Um, like um, is, is, the, is the ID of the drone connected to the battery? Uh, so like when it's talking I, no. to the computer? No, so the idea of the drone is uh, is idea of the drone. It doesn't matter which battery you take out, but as you take it out, it loses connection to the iPad. So I usually quickly reconnect it, and my girls already know how to do it. It's just extra click, or you can wait extra minute, and it will reconnect itself once it's. Um, but they just do it really quick, click, 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 okay. and it's connected. Thank you. Yeah, um, these drones, I find them. Easy, easier to connect to iPads than the, for the wind robotics. Uh, regardless of the drone, you still need the app. So the apps needs to be pushed in onto the devices. What kind of devices do you guys use? Do you use, use iPads? We we use Chromebooks with Chromebook. our students mostly. Some of our schools have some iPads. Um, mm -hmm. Apple and MCPS do not play well together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so whenever we're bringing ideas of, hey, we need this, it's a, it's an, you know, an, an Apple app. And they're like, uh, the IT department hates it when we say we need so, an, an iPad. Uh, yeah. So there's a way around it. Um, I, whenever I had for the wind robotics, it, you know, it's uh, the app that goes with their drones is called uh, a free flight mini. So I had to I just couldn't get it approved in time for my after school application, like uh, after, after school academy. So I purchased, we had enough money to purchase 10 fly pads, which is the basically those joysticks, you know, that go with a drone. And what I was doing, I was connecting the joystick and a drone with my own phone. And then I was handing it to the girls and they were flying. So the bad thing about it is if it's just you, by the time you get through six sets of girls, the first drone is already dying. So you need to like reconnect it to switch the battery and reconnect, you know? So there should be more than one adult or one more person with the app and the play and the tablet. So, and if you do run it at high school levels, which I did also in the summer school, most of those kids have their phones. So they can just download the app and use their phone if they're allowed in school. But usually after school academies allow their phones in anyway. So, all right. So another thing is um, the camera quality on this guy is so much better than the one on the for the wind robotics. If you guys are using the parrot mambos there, the cameras there you have to connect with the cord to the computer retrieve the pictures and pictures are very blurry this one comes straight to the app the tello app on the ipad and you can snap a picture and then download the pictures and use them and then really good quality uh uh block programming here long charge already mentioned the gimbal on this one i have bigger drone the more expensive drone that i use for me and it has gimbal which can rotate the camera left and right and you can do more picturesque shots and videos and we do one lesson with my drone for my after school girls but this one doesn't but it's a still great beginner drone uh, like i said only 10 minutes of flight so you need extra batteries and indoor only and it was uh, 99 dollars. there's the educational there's a tello edu also which I found not necessary. It's like, it's to save yourself $30, $30 and buy the basic version of Tello. Don't go for the EDU version. There is nothing fancy about those. Um, I also, so those little things, propellers here, they're very dinky. And so those uh, hulls right here too, they tend to break a lot. So what I did, I, I purchased those cages at the top. They're from Amazon and they protect your drones and let you do more activities with them. Like for example, that golf activity I showed in the beginning with the cage, it's more possible. Like they can just knock the golf off with the, with the cage and you don't have to worry about it being stuck on PVC pipes or but the propellers breaking. So if you can and you have money, I would suggest purchasing those, um, the cages. Uh, the fly pads, that's the ones I purchased for the, whenever I had the, the, the other drones. And they're not necessary if you have the Tello app, but if you do not have anything with like a tablet with an app, 
those probably will be helpful. That's what so students don't have to have an app to go with it and they can just fly. That's why you connect one and then just they're flying. I already mentioned the chargers and batteries too. Um, software, there are two types of software. The black square is for the regular teller that lets you use it as a, um, as a controller. So the controller pops up on the screen, you connect the teller to the phone and um, it just acts as a fly pad. The yellow teller there is Teller EDU and it has several levels of um, drone programming. It's very basic, but it's a good introduction to drone programming. And you can also program drones through it. So uh, this is last couple lessons for my girls. They first go through several levels of drone programming and as they complete 10 levels on earth and then several levels on the moon, I let them program their drones and it's drag and drop, same as the game was before. And so the drones can do flips, can fly, can do several tasks. For example, one of the drone Olympics tasks that I mentioned was to fly a square. So they have to think how to fly a square and then program it, program the drone to do the task. Both of the apps are free. They were approved by our IT without problems. So I'm assuming they have good backgrounds without any kind of a, like spying. Uh, so uh, they seem to be good. And this is how the inside looks like. If you look at the top picture, this is the programming um, that they do with the, with the drones. Um, block programming, you can change the tiles and it, it, it lets them, it gives them hints too. So it's not very frustrating. Like it's, they have to stop playing. And the bottom one is the, how the controller looks like on TeleEDU too. Um, and this is the obstacle courses that, that I made up. If you look at the one picture one, I already showed it to you, PVC pipes and pool noodles. Number two is the funnel and a 3D printed block. Uh, and inside of that block, um, you put ping pong balls. So the drone has to hover over the funnel. And as the drone hovers over the funnel, the like balls fly out. And you put several stations like this around the room and it's time activity. That was one of my drone Olympics. They have to hover, balls fly out, they will go to the next one, drones, and then balls fly out too. So that was a fun one. Number three is just hoops. Uh, they came from the, um, for the wind robotics, the, their, um, their, their website. And the last one, it was my golf course, again, PVC pipes and the balls on the top of it too. So use ping pong balls versus the golf balls because it was easier to knock off than the, it was the golf balls were too heavy. So that's the drone that Diane mentioned. This is the one that gave us money. I think it was $10,000 originally. And then the Maryland State Department of Education liked our idea. So they actually doubled it for us. So we were able to put it in several schools. Uh, it was not that hard to fill out. I'm not a grant writer. Like I, I do write little grants, but not big ones. This one was, uh, I guess, medium size. And I just had to ask for letters of support from the um, principals from the schools where I wanted to put them after I found the teachers and uh, just fill up a basic form, which Diane helped me. Um, uh, my Diane from our county, she helped me fill it out. Um, and um, we submitted it already twice so we got this drone we got this um grant twice already and um, that's why we were able to put it in several schools i hope it's come out it comes out this year i just looked and i did not see it was not published yet but i think last year it was not published till april or something like that because we submitted at the end of may um so i hope it comes out and i hope you guys will be able to fill out the form and get it i think it was ten thousand dollars and I think we got 20 the next year. Um, our county too, I don't know about your funding, but our county has a whole bunch of little companies that want to give money to schools. All you have to do is just kind of like reach out. So that was the a her trick. Um, we have a, a auto, automotive company in our county and they do up to thousand dollar grants on a rolling basis to schools. So I did, uh, this was not for the drones. This was for something else. But um, my point is, there is money to ask for. I also did a little, whenever I bought my own drone just to play with, I, I got it from Don, Donor's Shoes. So that was also a good way to raise the money. We also have the Worcester County Education Foundation that also gives some money too. So I don't know how Montgomery County operates or the other counties, but ours has extra money that can be asked for, you know? So um, just to give us a little break from listening to me, 
I wanted to ask you guys, does your district have necessary technology, staff, or time to implement the drone program? Like, is there interest? And is there any other fundraising opportunities in your district? Heather, since you're the top of my list, can I ask you first? <laughs> sure. Um, prior to this year, I would say no to question one, but mm -hmm. now that they've um, created um, our position of technology focus teacher, um, Ginger and I are completely dedicated to getting things like drones and robotics into our schools. Um, the fundraising opportunities, I think that is, um, I think you you pointed out something that we need to investigate a little bit farther. We wrote a grant in the beginning of the school year. Um, I think we were awarded it, but we didn't hear final word. Um, and part of that funding is for um, things like drums. Uh, but we need we need to do um, some more outreach to um, local businesses. We've got lots of businesses right around our county that are ready, willing, and able to give us money. Um, we just have to figure out what we need to do to secure those funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having like I can send you pictures of happy girls flying drones. Good marketing material. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Ginger, did, did you have anything to add? No, I think Heather kind of summarized it. As far as fundraising, um, it's exactly what she said. We know there are places that will give us money, but um, who they are and exactly who we get in touch with with those companies is kind of unknown to us. So it's just more research uh, that we need to look into. Okay. Diane, do you know of any other opportunities in Maryland? It's pretty pretty much local is where people seem to get money for things like robots and drones and those kind of specialty things. Um, the districts do get money from us, from the Maryland Center for Computing Education, but it has to be something that's going to go in the classroom and where teachers are going to learn, you know, something that's going to reach a broad range of kids and it's not enough to get like a whole class set of drones. It's just enough to get enough to learn on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, there's eight of us here now. So um, anybody wants to share? Mm -hmm. uh, hi, this is Dara. I just parked. So um, uh, as far as Baltimore City is concerned, we have a big robotics program, but that is kind of separate separate from the um, instructional technology department. It's run by people in the, it was kind of established by the science department. So they run Hawk on it. So any resources they have, they don't share with the rest of us. Um, mm -hmm. But I do have some ideas of some professional organizations that I belong to that offer grants that I'm going to tap into for this particular program. And then we also have the Y After School program, which has funding. And she was like, I have to spend money. I have to spend money. And so something like this is, is something that she would definitely want to um, participate in. And Stacey Davis at Central Office has been interested in having drones as an option for years, and I think she'd be a very enthusiastic supporter and partner. Also, there's going to be a workshop this summer on July the 19th for anybody who wants to come in and actually like try them out and kind of learn some of the little tricks to what happens when things get stuck and how to feel comfortable working with drones if you're new to them. So um, we'll also share that. Okay. All right, well, if that's everybody, we can move on. Um, so how my typical lessons look like? Uh, since the drones only fly for 10 minutes and I only have one set of rechargeable batteries, I can let the girls fly about for about 20 minutes total, give like a, a um, connection time and then um, the iPad return time. So half of my lesson is usually coding. Um, and since it's a third grade girls, I do very basic coding from code.org or Swift Playgrounds or Teller.edu. Uh, code.org has lots of basic things to begin with. Some of them have coded before because it's already like that's code.org is in schools and teachers do try them. And so I try to differentiate, give some harder coding to the more advanced girls once I know how, how they operate and then provide support to those who get frustrated when it doesn't work. Um, then after the first half an hour, we um, I 
give overview of drones. So we talk about um, some basic forces of flight. We talk about um, uh, you know the how it pitch your roll and um, a th a throttle. And we do some fun tasks. So I set up the obstacle courses for them. We, I let them fly around the school. Um, and we also do a little bit of mathematics. Like last uh, last Tuesday, we did the scavenger hunt. The girls flew around the school and just found the um, geometrical objects. Um, so those are, I don't know if I'll be able to play it, but those are my girls flying. So I'm a little bit of danger involved there. All the way around, lady. So the the girls are very excited to fly. It's a it's a good thing is about after school there's nobody in the hallways and they can freely fly around, and the hallways are empty, so it's a good way to um to try it out. Um so. I posted some of the lessons in the Google for, for folder that Diane's going to share with you, but I usually start with the overview of uh, where drones are used nowadays. Um, there's beautiful shots of cinematography, um, like volcanoes, nature shots, so you can do Hollywood movies, the shots that have not been possible before are now possible with drones. Uh, then there's also drones in agriculture, really good video that shows you um, how it's used right now because it's widely used in agriculture. Um, departments of transportation use drones for surveying and Amazon is starting to deliver uh, packages with drones. So all this can be told to the girls and they are in awe what drones can do and what kind of jobs available uh, already for them. Um, the picture in the bottom that says square, this is the um, handout I give them, and they have to go around and just take pictures around the schools of geometric shapes. A part of the grant was to support uh, uh, the girls' scores, so we uh, tried to embed mathematical activities because um, we take their scores from the beginning of the session and then after the session, so hopefully they already scores improve as they go through the, this little program. Um, like I said, I mentioned the forces of flight, but it's very briefly because they're not that much interested in it yet. But we do talk about lift, weight, dragon, and um, and uh, all those things just so they know all those four forces. And they just draw them and then they try to fly drone up, down, left, right also. Um, we also to talk about uh, thrust, we build a little bit of a, like a little flyer too. And this is kind of like extension to technology with you. We use iPads to build the little graphs and they can see the correlation between the distance and the amount of thrust it provides to the drone. Then I make them do videos with the iPads where they give each other's command, kind of like Simon says. Simon says, you're right. Or Simon says, roll left. Simon says, do something. So they have to be able to control their drones because they are still learning what finger does what. And, uh, and then they show us the video and kind of complete the task. And then they also like taking cute drone selfies. So that's always a hit to taking pictures with their drone. Um, those are other extensions activities that those of you interested in mathematics. So lesson one, um, you can have uh, students line up in um, any kind of a pattern and then you can do addition, subtraction, you can do multiplication facts, area calculations, fractions with the aerial pictures of the drone. I feel like just throwing the drone in a lesson kind of like this catch. So they do take a picture and then you describe that picture or they can um, make the patterns themselves and then you can extend it to any kind of a mathematical ideas. Lesson two was idea like you make the coordinate plane on the floor with the tape and then you have uh, girls give them a set of commands and they have to land on where that coordinate pair is. So um, for, that's for the, I did not do it with my girls just because it's too early for them. But I was thinking if you do clubs in the middle school, that could be a good extension to do with the coordinate plane and a drone landing. Uh, lesson three, uh, it's um, uh, you can time your drones. You, somebody can fly it and you can go a certain distance, fly back or like basically distance displacement and uh, time graphs. And to, so students can, you can talk, connect the drone to the graph and measurement. Lesson four shows you how in the drone app, there is a, 
uh, alt like the, the sensor that shows altitude. So you can record that altitude from the from, from the phone, and then with the ruler measure actual height of the drone, and then you can plot and compare. So you can see who who's right is the, the how right is this uh, altimeter in the drone app too. Again, it might be spot on. I did not notice it to be spot on, but again, it's something fun to do with drones in class. Again, it teaches you graphs, it teaches you estimation, it teaches you measurements and um, comparison. Um, so lesson five, uh, again, this is the aerial picture of the boats, but I was thinking you can do take aerial pictures and then you can talk about scale, for example, in geometry classes. Um, measure the object in real life, go up, take the um, take the picture, measure the picture and see how far the drone was. So there's a whole bunch of um, calculations that can be done just with the picture and then fly and drone about the object. You can also do like the blueprints from your school, take the aerial picture of that, compare those, do the measurements and scale from there as well. The lesson six on the side has um, uh, the... the, the scavenger hunts that I did with my students. So I gave them several geometrical objects and they had to fly around the school, find those objects. And then I had a little extension. Since we do have tablets, I had extensions for them. For example, just color half of the cir circle or color a quarter of the square or do other things too. So you can do extensions with that. Like they just fly around and then they do some math. You know, I mean, I don't know why I'm doing quotations for my, uh, because it's actually is math. You know, they are doing uh, fractions and stuff. The one on the bottom, that's the field um, I got from the for the Wind Robotics um, website. And I'm thinking, uh, in addition to do Fly Like a Girl Club at elementary schools, I also do a uh, drone competition for Skills USA at high school level. And that's the field I was thinking to set up, not to this extent, but something smaller. Um, if you see, there's a tiny little blue and green and the red dots there in the squares. Those are the, uh, the ping pong balls. So the the drones will have to fly over the ping pong balls, get them out of the little enclosure and get them like in, in a goal scoring area. Uh, this is kind of like a little dream of mine. I don't know how successful I will be setting this up, but that's something that you can try. My point is there's so much, so many resources out there that you can um, take it and then modify it for whatever you need it to be too. So maybe you wanna learn about time or timing somebody and then you can do or compare others um, to one another. So that could be a nice extension. Um, and then Diane mentioned troubleshooting, that there is definitely a, a learning curve with drones. Um, just yesterday, I had a drone that had um, the uh, sensor error. So I had to find out how to calibrate the drone. Uh, you need to make sure you put propellers in the right place. I also learned it the hard way. Then um, you need to, there are videos how to take it apart and change the motor if motor breaks. So um, connecting drones to, to the app, um, it just takes practice. It's not that hard. It's just a lot, a lot clicky at the beginning, but then you um, get used to it. I also noticed like I have 12 girls in each sessions and I do have 12 drones, but I found if you have 12 drones flying at the same time, there is a lot of uh, Bluetooth uh, interference. So I suggest not to fly more than six drones at a time in a small space. Otherwise, they're gonna, they won't fly very well. And I also said naming drones and fly pads. So each of my drones, whenever you connect them to the phone, they each have their own distinct number popping up. So my drone with the Sharpie, it's hard to see black on black, but it's, um, I, I, like I wrote down with a Sharpie a number on them. Because if you don't have a number, you don't know which drone you're working, for, working with. And then you have... 12 different things that you're on your phone and you don't know which one to connect. So I suggest numbering them right away. I had a student intern do that for me. So um, somebody else worked on that. And uh, if you guys do come to the summer session, I will definitely talk more about troubleshooting because there's a lot of little things that you have to learn, a lot of little clicks you can do, but um, it all comes with practice. And like I said, I didn't know much about it last year. And um, I'm more or less proficient right now too and can troubleshoot. So that's it for me. Um, I'll take questions if anybody has any. I do teach engineering. So it's uh, um, I do have this troubleshooting puzzle mindset that I do actually like troubleshooting. I like solving uh, thing, little things like that. So yes, um, I do have um, eight 
our one hour plan set. And I think I uploaded most of them into the Google Drive folder that Diane has. So if any teachers, if you, um, uh, Ginger, if you guys start the, the school, like if you put them on schools and teacher would like to know what, like how to start and what to do on like day one, I mean, they can email me and I can tell them like literally, okay, the first day you're going to do this, this and this, you know, and so it's not that scary and people don't know what to do with drones because um, it's kids like them. Out of the girls that I had over Christmas, I think out of the 12 that I had, five asked for the drones for Christmas, you know, so that was, they want to do that. I also reached out to our community members last year. I had um, guys, retired guys from the local uh, remote control clubs. They came in with their um, with their planes and they, to, they basically taught one of the after school sessions. You guys have a huge county. I'm sure there are going to be other um, other people there who are interested. So the remote remote control guys, they showed the planes. They also talked about flight and they let the girls fly their model airplanes outside too. Another guy I have come in this year is the guy from the airport and he runs the Young Eagle Club. So the, the last session he comes in and he actually offers free flights for the girls on the small plane. And uh, so this is because he, when he was little, when he was nine years old, somebody took him on a flight and that's what made him become a pilot. So he kind of like pays it forward right now. He comes to little clubs like the Boy Scouts and to my club too, shares um, about aviation opportunities, which actually should, he told me that um, a lot of pilots are aging out right now. So they're, they're anticipating shortage of pilots. So he wants to just uh, fly as many people as possible to show them how awesome it is up there too, so. Uh, so my point is, if you reach out to your community, I'll just put the word out. Hey, I'm running this club. I'm sure people will reach out to you and want to help out with that also. Great. And um, I added a few links into the slides, the link to the lesson. So you have all those lesson worksheets. I also added a document in there about Maryland rules and regulations about drones. Uh, those of us who are anywhere near Washington, D.C., there are no fly zones. Um, or if you're flying it inside in your gym or your cafeteria, that's not a problem, but it's also just kind of nice to raise the awareness a little bit that um, there's actually rules and regulations, as well as it being an honest to goodness career path <laughs> and useful thing to be able to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you earn the drone pilot license, I think when, when you're 16, you can qualify for it through FAA. Um, I want to say the the drone piloting opportunities can start from sixty thousand dollars, no degree, just with the drone license out of high school. So, 